Hello guys, welcome back to John's Workshop and in this episode we're going to be going back onto the Atlas 7B or Acorn Tools as it is for me, Shaper Restoration and as it says on the board behind me this is the start of the new paint scheme. So we're not going to be doing all the parts in this video, covering all the parts but you know, the, the, the line share of it, so the base and the actual Shaper casting itself. So this is part four in this video series and at the end of part three um, I posed a question to you guys, the audience, in terms of, uh, of a selection of colour schemes that I, were, I was comfortable with um, and, and I put the vote out to the audience in terms of what you wanted to see. So the results are in, it's all in YouTube comments so it's there for everybody to see. So I have my tally, uh, so <laughs> here we go and I know this is going to be controversial but so be it. So option one, which was to have the base and the shaper and everything all orange, uh, there were 14 votes for that. Option two, which was to have the base and the shaper all dark grey, there were 16 votes for that. Option three, which was to have the base dark grey and the shaper itself orange, there were 22 votes for that. And option four, which I never posed actually during part three of this series, but there were quite a few comments suggesting some, you know, either all grey or all orange, but with some highlights rather than just two tone. So, I, I there, and there were eight votes roughly for that, uh, reading between the lines a little bit on some of the commentary. So, yeah, so that's the results. Uh, controversial as they're going to be, and I know some people won't like it, but that I'm going to go with the majority, as I said, uh, in in sort of part three of this. So that's what we're going to do. So in this episode, and this will be quite a short one because nobody wants to watch somebody painting for hours on end. That's not really very exciting. So what I thought I would do, though, is just show you some small clips of the progress and also go through some of the other sorts of things so like the types of paint that I'm using because that could be interesting for somebody else doing something similar the methods that I'm going to use so that the implements you know I don't have a compressor I don't have the gear don't have the area that I'd want to do it in and it's always howling a gale outside so the you know I wouldn't be able to do this outside so that, that was never this is going to be brushes and rollers basically but I'll talk through some of that and probably a little bit around the order of operations so I'll show you what I'm doing first explain why I'm doing that first and what we're going to do next and so on so that's what this episode's going to be so I will show you various clips as we go through and bring you on the journey so let's crack on okay so I just thought I'd quickly run through some of the tools and materials so in terms of the initial degreasing we're going to be using a mixture of methylated spirits or denatured alcohol as it's known in other parts of the world some brake cleaner for the harder to get to areas so we can just squirt that in and so that's largely the degreasing element in terms of tools so as I said at the start we're going to be using a mixture of El Cheapo paint brushes that we'll be using some of those potentially and binning them uh, these were dirt cheap, but I've used these before and they don't they don't shed lots of bristles. And foam rollers, so we've got some foam rollers for the big areas where we can use a roller for the application. So we're giving that a go. And again, in terms of cleanup, I've got a set of five here, which are just very cheap, thin plastic roller tray liners so that there's no trying to clean roller trays out you know this stuff isn't emulsion it takes a lot of trying to clean out with lots of nasty horrible chemicals just as easy to stick one of these in the tray and let it dry and just chuck it in the bin when you're finished so that's what we'll be doing with that in terms of paint so initially we've got some so this is Wix anyone in the UK will recognize that and know what it is anybody who's not in the UK this is a one of the big DIY chains in the UK and this is something that I had kicking around from before so we've got some red oxide metal primer so everything's going to get a coat of that before we start because I'm right back to cast faces and bare steel work on a lot of it so a good primer and then following on from that 
everybody's favourite colour, well certainly my favourite colour, uh, vivid orange, gloss finish, heat resistant paint, that came from a company called K's, hopefully that's showing up, can't remember where I bought that from, eBay probably, and just arrived is my grey, so this is Rel 7024 which is a dark charcoal grey which is what I wanted so and that's come from a company called Black Country Paints see that there so there pretty much that's the overview of that so I will now cut away and show you what I've done already off camera as a sort of bit of work already up front on this okay so what we've done is we've taken the machine back out of the dolly we've taken the wood out which is actually what you've just seen all the paints on top of stood on top of the shape of casting so we've got our red oxide primer done on the dolly so that's all complete ready for finished coat and you'll see what I've done around the shaper base casting is we've degreased that very bottom lip and we've red oxide primed the bottom lip because obviously once that goes back into the dolly I can't access those areas so the next job now is to start right at the top of the shaper casting which is what we're going to do which is to start on the degreasing work and we're going to work our way all the way down degrease the whole thing ready for paint all the way down to that bottom edge once we've got to that point we're then going to give the red oxide a bit of a wipe over to make sure nothing ugly's got on it and then we're going to use the dark grey paint on the dolly and round that bottom lip of the shaper. At that point we're going to leave it to dry. We're then going to drop the shaper back in the dolly so that I've got it portable again. And then we'll start painting the rest of the, the, rest of the machine at that point. Starting probably at the bottom with the red oxide primer and working my way up. So I'll show you some cutaway sections as we go. Of some of that progress. So we're right at the top of the shaper here so this is where the ram sits and moves backwards and forwards so just before we start working our way down in terms of degreasing one thing I spotted as I took this apart this sort of half hole here is where the oil comes down from the zerk fitting on the top plate down and it should run into these grooves underneath the ram and what I spotted was the hole's been drilled down, the slots have been put in for the oil in the bottom, but the, there's a bridge between the two, which means the oil's never going to make it, or very little's going to make it, into this groove. So that was a miss at manufacture. So what I'm going to do is just use a little rat tail needle file, and we're just going to work that area to make sure that then when the oil comes down through the zerk fitting, it can find its way readily into this groove. So I'm just going to gently pick away at that bridge that exists between the hole and the oil groove. Trying very hard not to touch any of the slideways with the file because I don't want to be causing any damage anywhere else. I know you, all you can see is the back of my hand, apologies. But you can see what I'm doing, I'm just picking away at that. So I'll continue to I'll continue to work away at that and then I'll bring you back when we start the degreasing. So we're just masking up right at the very top. Thought I would show you a method I was shown many years ago when doing up motorcycles. So where you've got a funny shape like this, I want the top face masked but I want access to the rest of it to paint so a straight edge of masking tape right on the very edge that you want covered plenty of masking tape behind it to anchor it because it's such a small surface area and then just using a file a very fine file going in right across the edge like that 
is probably one of the quickest and easiest ways to get round awkward features far easier than using sort of a, a Stanley knife, Exacto knife, that kind of thing and then we've got a small piece in the middle here, same deal and you always pull the tape down away from the edge that you're working on so you don't lift the tape up and there we go, very quick very easy way to work around difficult shapes, difficult features when you're masking up so I shall carry on, get the rest of the top done um, I've already done a bit of degreasing around here I've had taps through all the tapped holes on this top end so I'm going to carry on and I'll bring you back when I'm degreasing a bit further down Okay, so off camera we've got our first coat of grey, so we've got the dolly complete, we've got our feet positioned back on it, all fully retracted at the moment. We've got our bottom lip of the shaper also dark grey and we've now got the shaper mobile again so I can move it out of my way when I'm not working on it. So the next job now is to get set up for the primer and we're going to start at the bottom and work up the base and then up onto the shape unit itself so we're going to get a roller a foam roller set up and we're going to give foam roller a try with the primer Okay, that's taken us about 10-15 minutes to get the whole of the base done with that roller. So easy compared to brush painting. And on that note, Okay, it's the next day and that's us all dry. So the next question is, do we paint the top first or the base? Hmm, decisions. I think I'll go with the top first and then if I spill any paint, it's going onto the primer and not onto the finished surface. So we'll start with the top. So I'll just get my stuff together and we'll make a start.
Okay, we're not happy with the roller because we're getting we're getting some bubbles off that foam roller with this particular paint. Not liking that. So we'll go back to what we know works. Ta -da! Hope you've got your sunglasses on. There we go. I have done as much as I am going to do to that base casting. That has been uh, interesting. I am happy with the results. It's gone on reasonably well. What I will say is the orange, as much as I like it, has been a complete pain in the hole to put on because the paint is really thin so that's had at least four coats to get to that stage based on that and based on some of the comments that I got from various people when we were kind of putting it out to the vote what we do with this I am going to paint the ram orange that goes on the top and the down feed slide at the front and probably one more piece and I can't remember which piece it is a small piece and then the belt guards on each side are going to go grey as are all the other bits and pieces and the motor on the back is going to go grey just because that grey went on in pretty much one coat with a bit of going around it afterwards just filling some bits in that I've missed so the grey went on much easier so I'll just shoot round three or four different angles that you see the other side so there's side two I'm just keeping the masking over this bearing cap because the bearings are all still in there until we're at the point we're ready to flush that through and start refitting things so we're just going to leave the masking on there for now but all the other maskings away and it's done a reasonable job I'll just show you from the front and there's our front view and you can see where the the masking has done a good job on the slideways and on the lead screw and lead knot. So yeah, pleased with that. That's the bulk of the work done. What that now allows me to do is commence the rebuild process of all the internals that go in here. Ball gear and all the shafting and everything else. I can crack on with that now, clear some space on my bench finally. Uh, so that will be coming up in a future video. So with all that being said and done, I will move to the board and we'll close this episode out. Well there we go guys, that gets us to the end of part four of the Shaper restoration. So a very colourful episode I think and I'm rather pleased with the results. I like the orange and grey and very much in keeping with the my channel orange and grey graphics I was even thinking about going absolutely bonkers and trying to replicate some of those graphics on the base on the side of the base and you know a good six hours into painting decided that oh yeah we'll just paint it one color or two colors as it's turned out um, without going mad what I might do is look to do some finer detailing on the ram or something on the top I don't know just as a bit of something special you know this is clearly not original paint scheme so uh, with that being said I feel at liberty to just go and make it my own which is what I've done so I'll have a look and maybe see about putting some grey detail pinstripes or something on the ramp at the top to blend in so it all kind of knits together we'll see we'll see how that goes so I hope I mean it's not the most exciting episode most people know how to paint you know dip the brush in the pot and whack it on it's not that complicated really but I hope there was one or two things in there that some people might find useful even if it was just the places that I bought the paint from and things like that so happy with that that's gone really well I'm going to be pleased to get off painting for a little bit and get back onto something else so with that being said thank you to the subscribers and the new subscribers that have come along and we'll catch you all very soon on another video when we'll be making something else